Hi, welcome to Promo Insiders, an ASI media podcast that covers the issues that matter most to the promotional products industry. What if a new government rule decided not by an elected Congress, but by a federal agency, suddenly put your livelihood at risk? That, say some critics, is the situation that independent contractors could find themselves in if a newly proposed rule from the U.S. Labor Department is enacted. I'm Chris Ruvo for ASI Media, and today I'll be delving into the details of the proposed rule change and what it means for promo with my colleague Chuck Michon, Senior Counsel and Senior Vice President at ASI. There's a bit to unpack, but the fact is, this is a topic of pressing importance for promo. Chuck, thanks for being with me. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's um, let's jump into these questions. I'll just set the table a little bit more by saying the proposed rule change would essentially revise the Labor Department's guidance on how to determine who is an employee versus who is an independent contractor under what's known as the Fair Labor Standards Act. So why should PROMO be concerned about that proposed rule change? Well, well the concern is our industry is, is known for its flexibility and adaptability, and independent contractors fit in that, that uh, scenario quite nicely. Um, it allows... M- optimum flexibility. For example, you may have a person who only wants to work 20, 15, 30 hours a week mm-hmm. as a salesperson for a promotional products company, and that's all they want to do for a nice uh, work-life balance. Similarly, kind of retirees who want to do this, make extra income, um, so they want to be independent contractors. They want to work on their own and, and make uh, see the fruits of their labor, and if they only want to work five hours, they work five hours, so it allows optimum flexibility uh, for in- individuals. All right, so the the issue then, of course, would be that if this rule comes in and suddenly those people who are happy with their with their situation as independent contractors under the under the uh, FLSA suddenly had to be um, classified as employees, that has major ramifications not only for those independent contractors themselves, I, I, I'm assuming, but also the businesses that are relying on them. Is that is that fair to say? You know, absolutely. I mean, there's always been this tension, and it really started um, back with the Affordable Care Act. Um, the push was to have people be employees so they'd be covered under the health uh, employer's um, health benefits. And then also, uh, the government, I think, a lot of times doesn't think it's getting its fair share of the taxes, whether it be Social Security, uh, unemployment, or federal taxes. But what what it would do here is, and it's really a false choice, I, I guess is my belief. I think the people who pass these uh, this regulation, in this case, think it's either, well, you're either an employee or independent contractor. There's also a third choice, namely none of the above. And I don't right. think they, they, they really figured that out. I mean, there's a lot of small companies that really can't um, hire employees because the additional cost, and they put it on the independent contractor to pay in you know, the Social Security. And of course, independent contractors don't have to pay um, unemployment. Uh, taxes because they're unemployed or unemployed. So uh, I think they failed to, to miss that, that there is a third option, namely, you're not going to work as an employee or as an independent contractor. It's not a switch. And a lot of small businesses, you know, w- will have to make the decision. I can't hire you as an employee. Therefore, you're out of work. And you could really, you could really see that kind of scenario cropping up. Like, like a, for instance, our industry had, we've talked about distributor sales reps, but there's also multi-line reps, right? And exactly. multi-line reps can independent contractor with suppliers. A, a multi-line reps whole livelihood is based on, they have the independence to represent multiple different supplier lines, you know? So unless they wanted to choose one supplier to work for, and that supplier actually wanted to hire them on that, that person's whole business model and, and, and livelihood is now out the window, and then exactly. those, and then and then those suppliers now don't have that that talented, capable sales representative representing their line for them. So it's it's and, a lose lose. I think you've said in the past. Absolutely, and the six factor test. It it's going to be pretty hard to prove that you're a um, an independent contractor. I mean, your stereotypical independent contractor is I want my house painted. You know, paint these five rooms. I pick the colors. You paint it. You're there for six months. You're gone. That's the quintessential independent contractor, um, and that's a pretty high standard. Um, mm-hmm. And if they do it, something integral to your business, which our businesses sell, that's one of the factors that goes against them being considered independent contractors. So, yeah, I, I think it can cause a lot, of, a, a lot of damage um, to our industry, and, and and it really changes the model. Uh, interesting. You mentioned the six factors there, and I know, boy, 
that can get complicated. There's a, you, you almost have to be in your position, be an attorney to fully understand it. But can you give us like a layman's idea just of what some of those factors are, or at least how they might be applied? Sure. Well, one of the things is, you know, you have to be like, you have to be in it for profit and loss, right? Okay. Well, most salespeople, I mean, their loss is I don't make any money if I don't get a commission. So that's not a loss. I just don't have a few extra, you know, coins in my bank. Um, again, if it's integral to the business, again, our business is selling and most independent are sellers. So it's integral. So it's those type of factors um, that that and, and they've kind of and we'll see what the guidance is. I suspect that the guidance will even shift more to you should be treated as an, an employee. So again, when you look at those six factors, I think it's going to be difficult for a lot of our people to say I'm not an independent contractor or I'm not an employee rather. All right, great. And just for, for folks who are maybe hearing this for the first time again, those those six factors are the criteria that in the rule that would be used to determine who's an employee or who is an independent contractor. And as and as Chuck just explained, it's a, a lot of those that seem to would seem to line up for folks in our industry going from being having to go from being classified as independent contractors to employees under the under the FLSA. So that is correct. Yeah. All right. So given some of those concerns, right, that's obviously we're talking about some pretty huge stuff. Are there steps that folks in our industry can take to, to kind of counteract this? You know, they can submit comments. And I would also suggest contact your congressperson, let them know, because, I mean, there is a law that um, is in Congress that cannot get passed. Right now. It's called the PRO Act, which mm -hmm. would basically do the same thing that this regulation will do. So some people think it's a backdoor of getting done what you can't do through the legislative process, analogous to an executive order versus a piece of legislation. So I, I suspect some con congressional people will be upset that they're, you know, the rule is if you want this, get it through Congress. If it can't get through Congress, then it shouldn't be a law. So um, yeah, I would I would definitely contact your legislator, let them know. Now, who knows what if anything they can do um, the next Congress to kind of undo this. We still have the, the public comment and fairly sure there'll be litigation over this because when you look at um, other players uh, for people who don't know California passed a law that greatly um, sh tried to shift people from uh, the independent contractor to the employee was that and, the AB5 I think it's called yep okay and Uber and Lyft uh, engaged in a massive uh, initiative that carved out for them that it didn't apply to them everyone else it applies to so uh, I, this will upset Uber and Lyfts and DoorDash's very essence of being their business model. So I suspect they will challenge this. It's, it looks that this rule will be issued in its final form in the first part of 2023. And then you'll see litigation come, I'm sure, to challenge it. And then what, if anything, Congress can do? You know, I, I don't know. Um, but uh, th there'll definitely be a fight. It seems, um, you know, you mentioned they're kind of trying to backdoor it. And that's, I think, what's a little... So unsettling about this, and I, I referenced it in my in my introduction, is that this was not something that an elected Congress is looking to pass. Essentially, the, as you mentioned, that act that, that was looking to do the same thing couldn't get passed in Congress. And Correct. now it seems like a way of kind of coming at, coming at it from a different angle, which, um, I don't know, kind of, just on a personal level, kind of leaves a bad taste in, in, in your mouth. And um, I just want to um, expand a little bit on you said that uh, folks can um, – submit public comments they can go to the basically the labor department's um, department website of labor on site this, yep. and there's a form you can fill out you could say this is what i think of it and this is how it would affect me and my livelihood or my business or whatever so we would we would encourage i i think the industry to do that no i, I would and again what i would point out to them is you're assuming that i will become an employee um i don't think that will happen i think i will lose my job as an independent contractor i mean again i think you know, you could, you could, you know, are they living inside the Washington D.C. bubble that it's one or the other? I think there's some of that going on to the extent that our people can bring real life stories to how it will affect them personally and affect their pocketbook and affect their families. You know, I, I think that that'd be useful. Yeah, that's a great point because sometimes things that that uh, let's even give people the benefit of the doubt. There might be a noble motivation for this on on some part that they think their people are going to be paid better and then and, and and whatever the reasons might be might be a positive. But the end result of that positive motivation might be highly negative for the very people that they're trying to help. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. You know, okay, what's okay. it? Then no good go. No good deed goes unpunished, right? Yeah, <laughs> it feels that way sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, I was going to ask you if this rule would impact um, other industries beyond our own. You mentioned ride sharing. 
um, services, you know, like like your Ubers of the world. Are there other ones that that might that might be impacted as well? Well, there's big, could... yeah, like the trucking industry. A lot of those, you know, these these trucks on the road. A lot of them are independent contractors, and they just haul now. I don't know what their the propensity is, but I mean, I know if I were a company and I had a good independent contractor, I would go to him or her more often. So, mm -hmm. you know, if 80% of their work is they're on time, then they're, and they want it. And the thing is too, is I, I think it's really missing the new economy. That is this gig economy. People want that independence. They mm -hmm. don't want to say I work, they want to go back and forth. And if, you know, I drive a truck for you and pay me on time, see you later, I'm yeah. going down the road. Um, as opposed to I'm quitting my job and I have to apply for a job. So this new, like, I mean, internet is, you know, when you see with Lyft and Uber, the internet is great for all this. It, it allows so much more flexibility and you're finding people, they, they want that flexibility. Um, all right, great, great stuff. So um, why now do you, and I'm not sure there's a, you'd have an answer to this question or any of us could know because we don't work for the labor department, but why are they considering this rule change now? Is there something that prompted this or, or where did this come from? Well, the, the, the Trump administration had a much more relaxed rule on this. So one could say it's, it's the effort just to undo that. And so when you undo that, you know, what do you put in there? So the Trump regulations were much more um, beneficial to independent contractors. Well, that was on the books. Well, they have to get rid of that. You know, if they, if they, if they say, I, we don't like that rule. So they get rid of that and have to put something else in there. So it, it may just be, um, uh, you know, a uh, politics. Well, politics and, and undo it. I mean, and, and quite honestly, one could argue that it would it could also undercut their ability to get the PRO Act through. Like, wait a second, you know, you, we don't need the PRO Act anymore. So there is some undercurrent, to un but they may figure we're never going to get the PRO Act done. So let's do let's get a good portion of the PRO Act done through a regulatory change. Okay. All right, fair enough. Um, so you mentioned before that um, if this were enacted, so the public, I should have mentioned this too, the public comment period where you could submit comments to the Labor Department. I believe it ends like December 13th or thereabouts. Yeah, it's it's 45 days from October 13th. So whatever right. the math is for that, yeah. All right, I, and I, I think I could be wrong that they extended it recently by a few days. So it's it's possible that it, it, it is stretching into December as opposed to the end of November. It could be, but, yeah. Uh, but either way, you have, you have basically a limited window. And then after that, they'll presumably take those comments, read them, and then they're gonna come forward with um, whether or not they're gonna go with this rule uh sometime i think you mentioned maybe early next year into mid next year correct okay so when they do that you said you anticipate that there will be legal challenges to this um correct. given your experience as an attorney and how these kind of processes work um how much longer would that put out th these rules actually but being put into place well you know it depends if a court comes in and stays the regulations right okay. to gather evidence which they could do an injunction it could be another six months you know to a year I um, mean, keep in mind, the concern here is this is for the Department of Labor. The concern is that courts throughout the country will, will look at this as, you know, the, the, the model of determining it. You know, that, okay. the state law still applies, but the concern is, oh, here's what the Department of Labor says. We're going to go with that. Here, mm -hmm. Here's the evaluation we're going to use. So that's that's the concern. Now, of course, if, if they're successful in getting a stay, then it gets some more litigation and then, you know, could actually theoretically spill over to the ne next election cycle. Mm hmm. Okay, interesting. And then if you have um, a party change, maybe at, at that higher level, that it, it, it'll flip back. Who, 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 yep. yeah, who, yeah, wow, it's, it gets complicated to keep up with. You can see see the predicament business owners are in. And that's the game. No one, especially business, likes uncertainty, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you'd rather pay a higher cost for certainty than mm -hmm. uncertainty. And that's what businesses are facing right now, especially our industry. And of course, with the impending, well, what people say what's going to happen in the economy, it's, it's just one more uh, uh, variable in the equation. And you know what? One, one other thing I, I want to mention, just as you're speaking, I'm thinking of stuff we touched on earlier. But people might say, why wouldn't somebody want to, why wouldn't a business want to hire that independent contractor that they like, you know, on as an employee? Cost, right? And you would allude to that. It's absolutely cost. Yeah. yeah. And even the other side, you know, for example, you know, if I'm a salesperson, okay, I'm going to uh, make my sales from two to three in the afternoon and put all the orders in from nine to 11 at night. You know, when you're an employer, you know, you can still do that, but it becomes a little more more difficult. And then, you know, all the taxes, then you have to play a work and work and comp, unemployment insurance, all those things. When when you're an independent contractor, you don't play, you don't pay those things, mm -hmm. and yeah, you, you that gets added onto the cost of doing business. Yeah. All right. 
All right, it's complicated, but I think I think we did a good job here laying out for why people in our industry should should care about this issue. Um, is there any kind of final thoughts you have or big takeaways that that people should walk away knowing and looking to act upon? Well, number one, I would monitor it, you know, because this is going to be fast moving and there's going to be changes. Um, you know, go to our site. I mean, I know you're following this, for, you know, for updates. I would definitely contact your representative. It doesn't. Some people think. You know, there's different way. A lot of con congressional people look at tallies. It's not the length of what you say. It's how many people responded to them, like kind of a, a, a snapshot poll. So I would certainly say that these new regulations are going to hurt your business. They're going to hurt me financially and, and, and it hurt my family. And and I would bring in the fact, especially where the economy may be going, you know, those sort of things. So to the extent that legislatures can have some impact on this, you know, they, they will. And again, and if you have you have the ability to submit comments. And again, I would use the same I, I'm, human interest stories you know don't make it legal make it make it yeah. real yeah like hey this is you know i'm a mom or dad of three and this is how i this is how i make my livelihood to support my family and i'm worried about you know this is going to put me out of a job basically right right yeah yeah all right well chuck thank you so much uh, for joining me today i hope everybody that listened to this um you know realizes that you know even if you're not an independent contractor you are working with companies in our industry and outside of it that rely on those independent contractors so really this is this is an issue for everyone and um, we encourage you as chuck said to you know weigh in with legislators and with the labor department on how it would impact you and our our industry so chuck thank you so much for joining me thank and you thank so you everybody for, for listening me. take care thank you